Hi guys, it's Ashley and today we're going to talk about how do we love God. So keep on watching to hear what I have to say. So, <clears throat> did not even know I was going to be here today in scripture, but I, I came here and I thought it was really good to just show you guys an exercise I did in regards to just getting my mind and my heart in the place to love God. So we're going to look at Mark chapter 12 verse 30. I'll put it on the bottom. And it says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And this is really important because this is actually the greatest commandment. Like, out of everything, this is what we are to do. And so we should pay attention to it, right? So what I did was I took those four words, the heart, soul, mind, and strength, and I put them on a piece of paper, just like this. So you can kind of see, just look at the blue for now. So I wrote down, like I said, the soul, the heart, the mind, and, the, and, and strength. And something that'll be important, because people are probably like, well, what's the soul exactly? Well, this is what I've discovered, and I could back it up with scripture. We don't have time today for that. But the soul is made up of the mind, made up of the will, and made up of emotions, okay? And there's all scriptures that back it up. We could do a video on that one day. But yeah, right there. So your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So then if you look at these words and you really try to wrap your mind around it, you're like, okay, God, how can I love you with my heart? It says I'm supposed to love you, and it says to love you with my heart. What does that look like? What does that mean? And same thing with the soul. So now that we know, okay, the soul is the mind, and the way I look at the mind, for the most part, are like your thoughts. So we are to love God with our thoughts. Okay, what does that mean? We are to love God with our will. And the way I look at that one, it would be choices. So I'm supposed to love, my, love God with my choices. And then emotions, okay? And then obviously he says mind again. And then strength. And so I'm going to encourage you guys to just sit with the Lord and just pull those words apart. And, you know, you might get a new revelation. I mean, for me, with the mind piece in regards to the soul, I'm just using thoughts right now. But we don't have to put that in a box. I mean, the Lord could open that and give you more insight about how you know, to love God with your mind. It could go beyond thoughts. And same thing with your will. I mean, right now, how I'm wrapping my mind around it is, okay, I'm going to love God with my choices. What does that look like? But again, you could have revelation that goes beyond the definition of will being the choices. So this is just what I'm doing just to kind of get the ball rolling. I'll give you some examples. So let's just start with the soul. So some of the things that I was writing down was obviously the first thing is the mind, also known in my, my perspective, thoughts. So I'm like, Lord, help me love you with my thoughts. And, and you know, a scripture that comes to my mind is think about things that are praiseworthy. Think about things that are lovely. Think about things that are pure. So if I can do that then I'm starting to love God with my thoughts. Um, renewing my mind. Like when I renew my mind, I'm actually loving God with, with doing that. So let's say I'm renewing my mind, I have fear or whatnot. If I'm working through that fear and I'm working hard to pull into that trusting of God, that's a form of loving God. I'm li literally loving God by renewing my mind. And we can renew our mind in any way. Let's say we have bad body image and we're trying really hard to get out of bad body image and we're like, nope, I'm going to speak life over me. I'm not going to go over there into the negative mindset. I'm going to be, no, I am beautiful. I have a good heart, X, Y, and Z. 
you renewing your mind in that way is actually a form of loving God. Like, it's really, really cool. Um, another way that a big one for me is, like, let's say jealousy is coming in or, um, like, really deep frustration or just things are just not of God. I'll literally be like, I don't partner with you, especially the jealousy one. It'll just rise up and instantly I'm like, I will not partner with jealousy. I will not partner with jealousy. And then whoever I'm jealous about, I'll actually bless them. And that's a form of loving God. I'm literally loving God with my mind as I renew it and as I am not partnering with that negative whatever it is, jealousy in this case, and then I'm blessing that person. I'm literally loving God by doing that. And so now I think you can kind of catch what I'm trying to say, right? I mean, it's endless. And so if we go back to the soul, we can do an example with the will. So choices. I'm going to love God with my choices. You know, this is endless too. I mean, it could be, you know, I'm going to choose to stop and say hi to that neighbor who just really just, I think, needs some attention and I'm just going to say hi to her. Or it's going to choose to um, pray for your enemies. Or it's you're going to choose to just, you know, get up early and spend time with God. Or... You're going to choose to bite your tongue when so-and-so is just driving you nuts. Um, you're going to choose to, you know, teach or uh, look at children with the eyes of God. Like, oh, kids are so amazing. Sometimes kids can annoy people, but God says, you know, kids are the greatest in the kingdom of God. And so, okay, I'm going to choose to respect kids and actually listen to kids and give them attention. You know, you're choosing to act a certain way so you can love God by what you choose. And then there's the emotions. That's the last part of the soul. So the way I look at this one is, you know, what are you doing with your emotions? Now, it's not that we can't be angry or or sad or any of that no god gave us those feelings but it's what are we going to do with them so if anger is coming in well we're not going to sin in anger like we're not going to sin in anger that'll be a way we can love god with our emotions um let's say depression's creeping in which sucks oh my gosh depression's a horrible raw i've been there and I still have days that I get hit with depression so how do you love God if like depression creeps in I really believe it's just pouring your heart out to him and being like God this is heavy again the depression is there again I need you to lift it I need you to take it you know what I mean um you doing whatever you can to get out of it you know what I mean like sometimes like just just by taking a shower or going for a walk like Fighting and warring that depression when it comes, I really believe is a way of loving God, you know, and, um, but don't beat yourself up too badly or don't even beat yourself up at all if like, that's even hard. Don't, don't, don't fall into that part of like, I am so broken. I don't even know what to do. And now, great. I'm not even loving God because of this. No, God is gracious and kind. So just know just, just bring them with you with your emotions. I think that would be a way of loving God. Just bring them in with your emotions, even if it's like, can't get out of the, you know, off the couch, weeping mess, and you're like, sorry, Ashley, I have nothing in me to go for a walk or even take a shower. That's okay. Like, we're all at different spots when that depression kicks in. So if it's just breathing, if it's just continuing to breathe and just say his name in the midst of the depression, I believe that's a form of loving God. Just not giving up. Just not giving up is a form of loving God. Like, I didn't know it was going to go that far over there, but maybe I was supposed to for a reason. So that's a little snapshot of the soul. So let's go to the heart. So loving God with your heart. Um, I think that can look a lot of different ways. For me, um, that's just just purely loving people like just I'm just gonna love I'm just gonna love however God tells me to love I'm gonna love my family and my husband and um, 
I'm gonna turn my heart to like praise and worship. So that's that's what I do for that heart, you know, area. Back to the mind because that is, you know, one of the words that is pulled out. Even though we talked about the mind with the soul, I would just go even more in depth with the mind, just renewing my mind and just really taking all my thoughts captive. And then finally, the strength piece. So loving God with your strength. The way I look at this one, and I have to give credit to Mike Bickle because he preached on this. Um, you know, there's times when you're like, I don't want to go to church. Like, I don't want to read the Bible. I don't even want to pray for anyone. Like, I'm so tired. But then you press through and you're like, no, I really, I know I need to go to church or I'm just, I'm just going to read the Bible. I just know I'm supposed to. And I just know I'm supposed to pray for this person, even though I'm tired. That is loving God with your strength. Now, again, that doesn't mean you have to go to church every single Sunday. If you need a day off, take a day off. That's okay. I don't even really go to church right now. Uh, anyways, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Um, but I don't feel super called right this second. We're still just trying to find a place. So, anyways. Um, or there'll be times where it's like, you don't have to... You know what I mean? Like if, if you're just really tired and someone else prays over someone instead of you, that that's okay. This isn't like legalism here. Um, but I just was trying to give you some snapshots. Again, even with the word. Yeah, we are to be in the word. And when we're tired but we still get our butts in that, my Bible's right here. That's why I'm pointing over here. That's a form of strength. But don't be legalistic and be like, Oh my gosh, I skipped a few days of reading the Bible. That means I do not love God with my strength. Oh my gosh, shame on me. No, I don't read the Bible every day either. I try, but there's days I don't get into it. But it doesn't mean I'm I'm not loving God with my strength. That's just that's just an idea that I'm trying to give you guys, you know, in regards to loving God with your strength. And um you know what I mean though, right? You'll have that peace that's partnered with, with it when you have to make decisions. Like sometimes you just know you need to rest and that's okay. And so there you go. Those are just some examples for you guys. Um, a couple more things, loving God with your strength. And, and a lot of these intertwine, but I feel like loving God with your strength could also just be um, just not giving up and persevering and pressing through. Now that doesn't mean to strive. Okay, I also believe that part of, of having strength is actually not to strive and sometimes just to like let go of a situation and trust in God. It's all the balancing act and it's all that really just communicating with God in regards to what does this look like for me in the season that I'm in. You know, one last nugget. There could be a season where the way you love God with your strength is to, let's say, intercede. Okay, like he is getting you up at three in the morning for whatever reason and you are to pray. Like you are tired, but you are to pray. So loving God with your strength in a season could look like that. But then there could be a season that comes three, four months later and he's saying, nope. Now it's shifting. I want you to sleep through the night. I actually want you to sleep in. I want you to rest. And I want you to take time off from work and just go have fun. And you might be like, what? Yep, that's how you're going to love me with your strength right now. You're just going to go have fun and rest. It, it can look different in different seasons. So in one more, and then I will really let you go. Um, for example, the Lord has called me to not go to the gym. Okay, like he made it specific that I'm not to have a gym membership. And I believe me obeying God to not have that gym membership is a form of, I would say, loving God with my strength. Because I'm, I have to have strength to resist not going to the gym. Okay, now that's me. But Sally over there, whoever Sally is, he might be saying, girl, I want you to get a gym membership. And so she does. And he's like, and I want you to go around three days a week. And she does. So she's loving God with her strength and going to the gym. And I'm loving God with my strength by not going to the gym. And we're both right. Isn't that kind of cool? So there you go, guys. Have a great day. Bye.